In video number 20, which was the basic lesson number 3, I introduced a very basic melody with strumming that enabled us to learn the tonic, dominant and subdominant, and also the minor of C major. Well, in this lesson, I'd like to develop that a bit further and just introduce a slightly more elaborate melody rather than just the basic middle C followed by the D and alternating between the two. In this melody, it'll involve playing the tonic note and then the immediate, major third, and then the second, and then we'll descend into the major sixth, and then we'll use the major seventh as well. So I'll just play the basic melody now. So in order to play that melody, so if you are sitting with the auto harp we do at the moment, what we do is that we place the last finger on the second position and then we play the middle C, which is this note here. And then we play the major second, which is the next note up, which is the D. And then we play the major third, which is the E. And then back to the C again. And then the A below the C. And then we play the C and the A again. And then the G below the middle C. And then the C again. So that's the first line of that tune. So we play that again, like this. And then to end with, we play the last note on the tonic, the C. So the exercise which we'll learn in this lesson is called playing a melody with strumming in all 12 keys. So that'll teach us all the chord buttons for all the 12 major keys. And as well as that, using this exercise, we can learn all the chord buttons for all the 12 minor keys as well, and, and also the dominant sevenths for those keys. So as regards these 12 major keys, we'll start off in the key of F sharp major, which is this very top left button here. And then we'll work our way through these subdominants, then to B major, and then to E major. And then through these buttons here, and then we end up in the final key of C sharp major, each time we play that melody. So in the basic lesson, number three, we learned the tonic, dominant, subdominant, and dominant seventh chords in relation to the tonic chord, and I talked about the mnemonics of how we rotate round clockwise and anti-clockwise if we wish to change from the tonic to the subdominant or the tonic to the dominant. So we utilize what we learn in that lesson in this exercise as well. And and what we didn't learn in that basic lesson number three was the actual relative third and we'll learn that as well in this lesson. So what we'll do is first of all we'll start off in the key of F sharp major and by the time we've mastered this exercise we will have learnt how to play in 36 different harmonies. So those are the 12 major keys, the 12 minor keys, and the 12 dominant sevenths. So first of all, we start off in the key of F-sharp major, which is this button here. And as regards the two control buttons for F-sharp major, it's just these two buttons here. So this is the key of F-sharp major. So for that melody we played just now, the first note is a tonic, and with that first note, we play it with the key of F-sharp major, the tonic key. So what we're doing is that we're playing this melody in the basic style, which is that we pluck the note and then we strum the melody afterwards, so we don't pluck and strum at the same time. So the second note, it's the major second, which in the key of F sharp major, it's the G sharp, and for that we need to play the dominant key, which is C sharp. So remember the mnemonic, if we need to go to the dominant, then it's dominante clockwise, so it's anti-clockwise. So for the C sharp major, it's we rotate these two buttons round anti-clockwise to these two, and then we press this button here for the C sharp with the thumb. 
and then we play the note of G sharp, which is this one here. And then we play the third and then the second quickly. And after that, the third chord, which we strum with the tonic note of F sharp. It's the relative minor third chord of E flat minor. In order to play the relative third of the major, then we play the same chord button as the major button, but as regards the two control buttons, we need to play the two control buttons of the subdominant. So these two are the two control buttons for the F sharp major. And so for the subdominant, we rotate them around clockwise. So these are the two buttons for the relative minor. So this is the chord of E flat minor. And then the major sixth below the tonic. And then now the next chord, it's the subdominant. So it's these two buttons here, the same as the relative minor, but we change the, the button here from the block of 12, from the F sharp major to the B major, to this one here. So it's, this is the chord of B major. After that, on the on the perfect fifth below the tonic, we play the tonic key of F sharp major. And then the tonic key again of F sharp major. And so that is the major second, so we play that with the dominant seventh. So if you remember the mnemonic, it's 70 or 7th V clockwise, so it's the dominant chord of C-sharp major, but we play only the most anti-clockwise button of the two control buttons, which is this one here. And then we play all that again. So that was the melody played in the key of F sharp major. So before we play the same melody again in the subdominant key of B major, we need to turn that F sharp major into a dominant seventh. So we do that by playing the most anti-clockwise note of the two control buttons for F sharp major, like this. Now we're ready to repeat the same melody in the key of B major, like this. So that was the first note and the first strum. And remember that because we have played the key of B major in the previous key as the subdominant, we know where it is now because it is the one that is the one one along in the column in the block of 12 there. And as regards the two control buttons, it's the one that is 90 degrees clockwise. So once again, we apply the same mnemonic rules that we learned as regards changing to the clockwise and anti-clockwise that we learned in the previous lesson. Same as we did just now in the key of F sharp major. And remember that we're still keeping to the fingering rules, whereas if it's any of the 12 strings below middle C, then we play in the first position. If it's above, then we play in the second position. If it's any of these top 12 strings, then we pluck with the middle finger. And for strumming, if we do pluck with the thumb, then we strum with the index finger. If we do pluck with the middle finger, then we strum with the ring finger for a chord that is higher than the plucked note, or with the index finger if the chord is lower than the plucked note. So that was the major second of B major, which is the, the note of C sharp. And so for that we need to play the dominant, which is the F sharp major. And we just played that melody in that key so we know where those buttons are. So the next chord is the chord of the relative minor of B major, which is A flat minor. So for that, 
we press the same button as the relative major, which is the B major button, but we play the two control buttons of the subdominant. So we swivel around these two buttons here, 90 degrees anti-clockwise to these two. And so this is the chord of A flat minor. And because in the bottom 12 strings we don't have the notes of the A flat, then we just play the same note, the B, like this. And then the fourth chord after that is the chord of the subdominant, which is that of E major. So we move down one to the E major button, but we play the same two control buttons as the previous chord. So that's the so that's the perfect fifth with which we need to play the tonic. So that's the major second with which we need to play the dominant, which is F sharp major. And then we we'll repeat that again. And then for the penultimate chord, we play the dominant seventh. So it's these two here. And then we turn that into a dominant seventh, which is the B major seventh. And then we're now on to the key of E major. So that is the chord of A major, and once again we know how to find that because we just find the subdominant by rotating the two control buttons 90 degrees clockwise from the tonic. So it's these two buttons here, and we know it's the next one in the block of 12. So we've come to the bottom of the column there, so it's the next one along, which is this one here. the subdominant of E major, which is A major.
now we move on to the subdominant again, following the same principles as we did earlier. So this is now the key of D major. Now on to the key of G major. And now we move to the subdominant key of C major. key of F major.
and it's now B flat major. Now to the key of E flat major. the key of A flat major. Finally, the last key is a key of C sharp major. So that was the exercise of playing that simple melody across the 12 different major keys there and by doing that we learnt the 36 different harmonies of the 12 major keys, the 12 minor keys and the 12 dominant sevenths. So once we've learnt this exercise and can play it perfectly we can add more embellishments. So rather than just playing that basic simple tune straight we can add embellishments to it such as like this.
So for that, I was just adding extra notes in between those main notes there as little embellishments. And as well as that, we can also add more strum chords in between each note of the melody, like this. So these are ideas that one can think about to make it more fun and interesting once we've mastered that simple tune with all those basic chords in all those 12 different keys. So that is all for this video. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. If you do have any questions, suggestions or feedback, then do leave them down below. Otherwise, in the meantime, until next time, have a nice day.